Any of you forgotten where you are in the last few minutes? Uh, tonight is the night that the whole Christmas season has built up to. The whole Advent time has crescendo to this very moment. And I love this service because it's a time that, that we can push the button on our life's DVR. We can hit the pause button. We can mute the noise, the, the chaos, the craziness of this time of year. And this moment here is the time we for, can forget. You can forget about all the things that has to be done, all the things that has yet to be done, and all the things that will not get done, and focus and reflect for the next few minutes on Jesus. You see, Christmas for me is a, is a time of marking. It's a, it's a season in my life when I think back to, to Christmas's past. I can, I can remember Kelly and my first Christmas as a couple, a young married couple. Remember living, as we call it, in the rat house. Because you can hear the rats running up and down the, down the wall. And I, I remember buying our first Christmas tree as a, as a young couple. Remember that, honey? And, and we didn't have any money. I mean, we were broke. We were living in a rat house, remember? <laughs> and we go to the lot, and this, this nice old man helps us pick out a tree. And, and then when we found the perfect tree, he asked us how much we had to spend on that tree. And, and remember, when, when no one was looking or he thought we weren't looking, he pulled the tag off and, and put it in his pocket. And when he found out... How much we had, he said that was exactly how much the tree cost. Remember that? And it's a it's a time of, of, of marking, it's a time of remembering and, and remembering our first Christmas with, with Abby and the, the first time we got to buy presents for our own child. And then remember our first Christmas with with Will. And then and then we remember the the first Christmas that following the death of Kelly's dad that we just kind of canceled Christmas all together and we packed up in the car and we went to Florida and went on the beach on Christmas. We just wanted to forget. I mean, Christmas is a time that, that we mark things and, and, it's, and Christmas for all of us is when we pause. We pause in the hectic part of our life and, and we mark time. We mark time of our life. And so if it's all possible, if it's all possible, forget about what's going on in your mind. If you can, press pause and let's reflect. Let's reflect and let's go back to the original Christmas of a baby born in a small village in Bethlehem. And I believe when we pause and we look back at the original Christmas story, what we'll find is encouragement. Encouragement for our own life right here and now when we unclick the pause button and we go on about our life and go on out into the world. We begin the story of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke beginning at the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. First verse, excuse me. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taking place for the entire Roman world. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The birth of Jesus kind of starts out very unassuming. I mean, our story, story begins with this very unassuming young couple, Joseph and his pregnant fiancée Mary. And the emperor, Caesar Augustus, wanted a census, wanted, wanted to count noses, if you will, of everyone that lived in his kingdom. And in order to get an accurate account of everyone that lived there, he ordered everyone to return to their native village, their own hometown of origin, if you would. 
the place where their family tree began. And so Joseph, being the, of the family tree of King David, took his pregnant fiance Mary and headed to a small out-of-the-way town called Bethlehem. Now here is where he encounters his first problem. You see, there was no Hilton. There was no Motel 6. There was nothing like that. And maybe it was because he was they were a young couple that they didn't have money for a hotel. Or maybe they forgot to make arrangements. But whatever the case, they had nowhere to stay. The only place they could stay for the evening was a barn. It was a barn. And so Mary, in this very non-assuming kind of nonchalant way gives birth to Jesus in a barn. No one was there. No one was there. No one would have known except join with me in verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. Keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news and great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. What's going on is basically this. You see, near the barn where Mary had just had this baby were some fields. And in the fields were some shepherds. And the problem we have, the problem we have here is when we hear the word shepherds, our minds race back to the last children's Christmas pageant we just watched. You know what I'm talking about? Where they all are dressed up in, in choir robes and, and there's, they have, have these festival uh, little outfits on and, and, they're, and they're walking around on stage all nervous and, and all the parents have their Christmas sweaters on and their cameras and they're taking pictures. And we're like, oh, of course the angel showed up uh, to the shepherds. You know, and, and we see the little kids and they say, yeah, the shepherds, they, you know, peace on earth. And, and, and then, and then they, they start singing, glory to God in the highest. Oh, oh, oh. Are you with me? How many programs have you set through like that? Sounds like me more than my share. But we have to stop before any of that happens. Before our minds race back to that, we have to stop. We have to put ourselves, put ourselves in their shoes. You see, these are quiet. These are quiet, introverted, calm shepherds whose job day in and day out is exactly the same. All day long, every single day, they don't have a day off. They lead their herd of their sheep from one pasture to the next. And at night, every single night, they find a cutout in the mountainside. And they herd all their sheep into this cutout of the mountain. And they herd their sheep in. And then they go and they find some rocks. And they make them a little wall. Every single night it's the exact same thing. And then after they get all the sheep in there. They get all the, all the sheep quiet. The shepherds lay down in front of the gate. Across the opening. Every single day. Every single night. It is the exact same thing. Their job wouldn't even be covered on TLC like Deadly Catch or something. It's a very boring job. And these are quiet people. If you're looking for excitement in your life, you don't take a job as a shepherd. They don't want anything to mess up their routine. Because if their routine is the same day in and day out, guess what? No sheep are lost, they keep their job. It's no big deal. And these shepherds have just gotten their sheep quieted down for the night. If you've ever had a newborn, you know how careful it is when you get up and lay down at night. Everything's calm. They're laying at the gate. They're looking up at the stars. They're enjoying the peace and quiet. And they're just hanging out like they've done every single night of their life. 
And then all of a sudden, an angel appears out of nowhere. And they begin shaking. And the angel says, do not be afraid. 